It's no doubt that most of the market's talking about the U.S. dollar and the euro right now in terms of the dollar weakness that's triggered by the euro strength. Now, I say that because it's important to understand who's driving who. And in this case, it is definitely the euro. This optimism from a better than expected CPI number this morning, as well as the renewed optimism of not so much the fact that there are, again, Greece talks and, and maybe some sort of headway being made, but rather any kind of conversation about Greece and any kind of attempt to remedy the situation just begs the question, are they really? Are we really going to see a Grexit? And any time Grexit looks like a less likely scenario, you see Greece rally. Now, here's what's laughable about the Greece story rallying the euro in terms of sustainability of this story. Yesterday, if you would have looked up Greece as it relates to the euro and the price action, Greece was a weight on the euro, it was dragging it down. And then when you look at it, fast forward less than 24 hours, now Greece is the reason for the optimism. And this is why I say ultimately it's an unsustainable move. And it's an unsustainable move within the context of a daily chop where we're just beating over a well-worn path. There's no nothing new here, no new breakthrough of some kind of key price level. Notice the daily time frame. We're just in chop. Now, if we were up against the 115 handle, 114.90, I'd be a little bit more excited about some sort of setup in the euro. If we were down near 94, down near 93.80, again, I'd be a little bit more excited about levels at which it would make sense to buy the dollar against the floor. But really, this is just a lot of volatility within chop. It's a big wave within an already choppy ocean, if that makes sense. It's all slop. However, what I would actually like to do is try to find places where there may be a, an opportunity to near term. It's not my favorite play, but it is something worth keeping in mind. Are there opportunities, are there bubbles where we could see, you know, opportunity bubbles, where we could see some sort of correction in the weakness stories against the dollar. In other words, can we find a weaker story, whether that be the New Zealand dollar, whether that be the yen, that might give us an opportunity. And that's right now what I'm on the lookout for, just for some near-term play, near -term plays. Uh, same thing could be said about selling into the euro strength. You know, is there an opportunity in the euro pound, euro Canada, euro Aussie? That's kind of my near-term watch list right now. Uh, those five pairs, New Zealand dollar, US, US dollar, Japanese yen, Euro pound, Euro loony, Euro Aussie. Is there opportunity in those five stories? I don't want to commit to these longer term. I don't like them. So that brings me to where we are right now. And I'm going to zoom into the Aussie yen. Now the Aussie yen is a great position that we had on from the 94.85. It's the third position we've taken in the Aussie yen since the 22nd of May. This one actually was a 94.85 buy that we triggered the end of May. And here we are June the 2nd, and we're finally seeing the follow through from that swing buy. And what's so great about this, and I talked about this at length in the morning chat, is we're actually reaching a second profit target. We've already made our way through the 95.95 profit target, so that's a 110 pip winner. Now we're making our way through and I think we're just about there, maybe not quite yet. Okay, so we have a 96.40 second profit target. And at that point, at 96.40, we can start talking about uh, backing off to a daily price movement range based trailing stop. In other words, now we're gonna back off and just see how high is high. I'm no longer going to be proactively taking lots off the table, I'm gonna now just have the lots that I have open, no more what I call finish line profit targets. Now it's just a matter about uh, of backing off by a strategic pit movement, preferably a daily price movement range or an expected price movement range. Uh, for those of you that are familiar with my volatility analysis, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And I'll back off by that amount and I'll just wait to see how high is high, all the while acting, let, letting this trailing stop act as a safety net. So this is a Aussie buy, uh, Japanese yen short. So obviously I'm all for risk on. I'm all for the, the yen to weaken with Dow, weak, uh, Dow strength, 
Nikkei strength, S&P strength. I'm all for that. Uh, obviously, that'll help the short side of this entry. I'm long Aussie, short yen. I definitely have my second profit target as of, as of now. Should be seeing that being hit. And the thing, thing to remember with the Aussie yen is the reason we rallied up the way we did is this was purely an RBA move. We were already, and, and I'm an Aussie bull. I've talked about that quite a bit. This was the RBA, but notice that throughout yesterday's session, we were slowly meandering higher until boom, we launched, and then we continued to march higher. So this is a great move for Aussie bulls like myself. But again, I just want to remind everybody tonight at 9.30 p.m. Eastern, we have Australian GDP. Tomorrow at 9.30 p.m. Eastern, tomorrow, Wednesday, we have the retail sales and trade balance numbers out of Australia. So if we are going to find that next rally, it's likely going to be, or that next wave of buying, it's likely going to be on those two data points. And if we're going to exhaust at levels moving higher into 97, those will likely be the catalyst for that as well. But the great thing here is we've already realized two profits. We're already now simply risking house money. A stop loss in this market at worst is represented by a, by a break even at 94.85 and better yet is represented by a daily or, or, or expected price movement range trailing stop. So just to give you an idea of what that would be, something along the lines of say 95.15, that's as close as I'd even venture to get to this market. Uh, probably a little bit closer to say 94.90, which essentially is a break even. So all I'm risking is unrealized profit after already taking two profit targets off the table. So with the remaining lots, this is at worst break even. All I'm risking is house money, and that's such an important point that I'm trying to stress because I'm not going to let this winner turn into loser. So we've been talking about this trade for some time. It's my most recent entry. It was definitely one that was going to benefit from a more neutral to hawkish statement from the RBA. I mentioned there was a pretty good chance we'd see a short squeeze in the Aussie because of the weakness going into this event over the past couple weeks. And so now we see that maybe there was a little bit of profit taking, kind of a pause in front of the event. You, you, could, you could see that as well uh, the session or two before yesterday's RBA, or I should say today's RBA. You could see that there. Let me blow this chart up. So we're sell off, sell off, sell off, and then we just kind of paused. And and that to me was the, uh, that to me ultimately was, let's move this here. That was definitely, uh, don't you love the way the charts are shaking? It's a little earthquake there. All right, there we go. <laughs> so take a look at uh, the way we're moving. I mean, that was kind of the short squeeze scenario because there was the expectation that maybe the RBA was going to be dovish. Then we had, I think, some aggressive short sellers taking advantage of that possibility. And then we had these, I think these amounted to some profit taking. Just that wait and see, two squat bodied candles. I talked about this in yesterday's breakout session. I believe this was the pause and a little bit of the profit taking that we were looking for. And then boom, I think this is the short squeeze that I think sets up in front of really a, a little too much ambitious short selling against what is a dominant trend. And I'm going to leave you with this here this today. Uh, there's, it's been explained a million different ways. Maybe I'm exaggerating slightly. But I think it's probably best known as Paul Tudor Jones' paradox. And, and I think even before I knew what it was, it's something that every trend trader knows. It's part of the trend trader manifesto, if you will. And that is we want to be with the dominant or overall trend. But the entries that we take in that trend, good trend traders know to be contrarian. What does that mean? Are we picking tops and bottoms? No. Uh, no one's made a career doing that. In fact, I tweeted something like that the other day. If you follow me on Twitter, at Roggy Horner, you probably see that there. So the entries are contrarian, but the overall strategy is trend following. The strategy is waiting for a correction. So that tactic might feel a little bit more like you're on the other side of momentum. And you are, but you're absolutely on the side of the trend. So I'm going to leave you with that. 
And that's where these great risk reward uh, ratio entries, you know, where you, you're taking advantage of a pullback, lower risk, higher potential reward, and boom, there's that short squeeze we were looking for. So I hope you guys were on the right side of that Aussie, uh, meaning stick with the trend. We're not guessing here, gang. We're just going with the flow of the river. I'll see you in the next update.